Okay, awesome. Just a quick reminder: we'd be recording this uh, AMA, so there'll be a there'll be a recording available later on today, and there might be a transcript too. So if you are not able to stay for the whole AMA, just don't worry; we'd make it available. Yeah. We'd start off quickly with introductions. So my name is Ralph Gibbs. I'm the senior community manager. And I'd like to thank you for joining today's AMA with our finance team. We'll be talking about Concordium's tokenomics. Um, we would also be joined by Jorgen Hogland. He's our chief financial officer. Um, Jorgen, would you like to introduce yourself? What do you do? Yes, so certainly. So thank you very much for the introduction. As uh, Rev says, I'm Jorgen. I'm the CFO of Concordium. I have been with Concordium for almost one and a half years now, started in mid-2018, when we were six people in total, managed by our founder, Lars Eyre Christensen. My background before Concordium is that I have previously worked with various financial institutions and some larger industrial and, and service companies. Uh, I've worked in, in a large Danish bank, heading the, the merchant bank, the department. I've been head of treasury for I, <clears throat> ISS, uh, one of the world's largest service companies. And I've worked with uh, AP Moller Maersk uh, as a shipping man uh, way back in my earlier days. So now I'm in, uh, in uh, blockchain and crypto and uh, find it extremely interesting. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that was a quick, brief introduction. Um, so as you all know, we give a chance for community to send in their questions ahead of time. There'll also be a chance for live questions, but then we jump straight into the questions that we received earlier. So the first one I see here is the supply of CCD is increasing. Do you have a plan for deflation? All right. Well, yes, it is increasing because uh, the increase is basically an important part of the overall tokenomic system. Uh, and the, I'd like to say initially that the purpose of the tokenomic system is to ensure that we have a blockchain that is secure and stable. Uh, and very important part of that is to have a system that provides sufficient financial incentive for the people who make up the blockchain, the people who provide computing power to the blockchain, there needs to be a financial incentive for everybody to provide computing power. And the, that incentive in our tokenomic model comes from the new minting of CCDs so that the people who hold CCDs and choose to be, to, to stake their nodes and run a, a node, uh, be part of the blockchain, they earn a reward. And that reward is new minting of CCDs. And that is why we have what you call inflation. Uh, you can also say it's, it's a growth of the number of CCDs. And that is basically uh, an important part of the overall security of the system because it ensures that there are motivation, there are incentives for people to, to actually make up the, the, the blockchain. So we think that that the uh, uh, steady increase of the CCD is uh, beneficial because it has these uh, positive impacts on the stability. Uh, today, the minting rate of new tokens is 10%. And uh, that is also, in my opinion, uh, relatively high, seen in a longer-term perspective. And that is why our own target is, and, and our plan is to, over time, decrease that rate to a much lower rate. Our target is 2% over time. And we have a plan to decrease over time the, the inflation rate to that level. In the beginning, there are reasons for having it higher because we are kind of in the early days of the blockchain. It's important to have this incentive for people to, to get attracted to the blockchain with their computing power. So, uh, so before we, we decrease it, there needs to be a certain volume, certain activity. But uh, it is part of the program to, to have it uh, as low as 2%. So it's not that we think that 10% is, is, a, is a, a necessary over the long run. Awesome. So actually, the second question also 
is touching on you thinking it's a high inflation. So it's asking, don't you think it's a high inflation, which you discussed, you shared your opinion on, but could you elaborate more on how we are going to reduce that rate? How do we get to the 2% you just mentioned? Yeah, so as I said, we need to make sure that there is sufficient incentives for the people who basically provide resources to the blockchain. In the beginning, and the beginning I see is now, still, uh, we don't have an awful lot of <clears throat> transactions on the blockchain. And that means that when we look at the sources of income for bakers and finalizers, they earn rewards from transaction fees and from new minting. In the beginning, now, we have limited number of transactions on the, on the blockchain, so we need to have a relatively higher element of rewards coming from from uh, new minting. Uh, as time goes by, and uh, hopefully we are successful in in uh, increasing the number of transactions with new use cases and general awareness of the blockchain, uh, the, that will shift so that node runners will earn a higher rate of their returns from transactions and lower from uh, from new minting. And in that connection, the inflation will decrease. So that is how we see it. Okay. And the next question actually asks, so what will happen if inflation cannot be reduced? Well, uh, it is a uh, hypothetical question because it can be reduced. Of course, it, uh, well, technically, it's just a parameter in our tokenomic system. So uh, the governance committee that we have installed and which uh, I, I may have an opportunity to talk about later, uh, it is within their control to adjust the parameters of our tokenomic system. One of the parameters is the uh, the inflation rate. So it is uh, basically something that we can just decide to do. When and under which circumstances the government's committee will decide it, that of course remains to be seen. But as I said, we have a plan for that. Uh, but there could be other uh, other aspects, other circumstances that would lead us to reduce the rate faster. It could also be slower. That is a kind of a judgment that the governance committee will make. Uh, but, but technically answering the question, what will happen if inflation cannot be reduced? I mean, it surely can be reduced. And the extent to which we, it will be reduced depends on how does the overall system develops, how does the number of, of uh, node runners develop, how does the number of transactions and so on. So that will be monitored very closely by the governance committee. And on that basis, the gradual decrease will be decided, the speed of the decrease of inflation. Okay, so the next question touches on the You've mentioned the governance committee. We have a question regarding the Concordium Foundation. So it says, it seems like the Concordium Foundation basically <clears throat> becomes the Federal Reserve in the case of regarding monetary policy. So it seems that the number could change based on subjective judgments as opposed to objective measurable criteria. In which, in which case, how does that play out 10 to 15 years down the road? Yeah, well, uh, 10 to 15 years is, of course, a very long time in this market and in this industry. Uh, imagine what you would have said 15 years ago <laughs> to that question. The question could not have been raised at that point in time, right? But, but uh, you know, regarding monetary policy, as I said before, we have a governance system uh, where we have the Concordium Foundation's board of directors at the top, we establish a governance committee will, which will be given uh, authority to make decisions in relation to what you call monetary policy, uh, what I would call uh, tokenomics parameter decisions. It will be of the responsibility of the governance committee. That committee uh, will be gradually uh, will gradually shift character from being a committee that is installed by the board of Concordium Foundation to being predominantly selected or elected by token holders. So we have a, 
path for decentralization uh, that goes towards full decentralization. Uh, so, and that uh, that path, that gradual development, our horizon for that is currently around five, six years. And after five, six years, we have a situation where the the, uh, the token holders uh, are more or less in control of the what you call the monetary policy, the parameters of the tokenomic systems. So. So that is uh, how we run it. Uh, I would not say we are a federal reserve, but but that but, but we do have an entity that is responsible for tokenomic uh, development. And the good thing is, uh, it will be primarily selected by the people who have the CCDs. So so we are sure that the governance committee will take into consideration what is good for the CCD and for the CCD holders. Okay. So regarding all these actions, again, so there was a, there were a lot of questions coming down from different angles on token inflation. So the next one is also saying it, this they see token inflation as a big problem, plans to reduce it. We've already mentioned we do have plans. And they're asking, what will we do if the transaction cannot increase as expected? Yeah, so... What we do if the transaction cannot be increased as expected? I would say the transactions can increase. Whether they in fact increase is the result of you know what we do every day. It's our everyday work in relation to developing the technology, developing our commercial area with the dialogue with the companies that want to build use cases on the blockchain, our uh, investments in new tools and technologies that will make the blockchain more and more relevant for use cases for the DeFi world. Uh, so we are confident that our that the ability of businesses and uh, and blockchain users to use Concordium blockchain in the future will be better and better. We will basically be more and more competitive. And uh, so we expect, and I think it's a reasonable expectation, that the number of use cases will go up, the number of transactions will go up. Only, not only for for use cases, but also because we um, we are going to have more listings. As you know, we are listed on five exchanges today, and it means that we have a reasonable broad scope of people who are. Uh, being uh, who see the blockchain, uh, or, or sorry, see the CCD, and as additional listings are added over time, uh, we even broaden the the number of people that are exposed to CCDs and exposed to Concordium. So it's as I said, it's ev what we do every day to to ensure that the number of transactions actually will increase. But of course, it's it's not something we can decide on our own. Awesome. Okay. So the next question, it's slightly tangential. This one touches a bit on inflation and also how it's affecting the price and uh, how the market is working. So it says, um, if more care was taken, there would have been several actions taken towards the declining trend. So including burning token, reducing inflation and listing on more exchanges. So what, what would you say towards that? Um, we, we are doing whatever we can to uh, to make the Concordium blockchain expand and be successful and do whatever we can that we think is in the best interest of the blockchain, not only in the very short term, but in longer term. So our focus is on building the blockchain, expanding the scope of people and businesses that have access to the CCD and owning CCDs. Burning is a kind of a, a technical measure that takes away some uh, CCDs, but it is not something that ultimately helps the project, the, the blockchain being successful. The, the success comes from an other angle. It comes from the demand side. And that is why it is uh, so important that we are good 
at marketing the blockchain, good at attracting use cases, and we use a lot of our resources on that. Uh, we do not think that that uh, reducing inflation, for example, if we just reduced inflation, what good would that do? It would reduce the incentive for people to run nodes. Uh, that would uh, could uh, lead to people not finding it worth the effort to buy computers and, and participate on the blockchain uh, protocol and, and uh, baking and finalization. Uh, and there could be other negative implications from uh, having less incentive for, for bakers and finalizers. Uh, so we, but, uh, so we, but yeah. Come on. Okay. So um, the next one touches more on it deviates a bit from the 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 pricing and the tokenomics. This one touches more on the developers and the bakers. So it's asking, can you give us more info regarding the addresses and they supplied us with addresses? So can we give more information on them and how it's affecting price? Because they view their actions as suspicious. Is this something you can touch on? Well, I think you will understand and everybody will understand that I cannot give details on the people who own the CCD. Well, I can give details of some, if I would, some I my own myself, but I cannot uh, give details on people who have purchased CCDs uh, from Concordium. But I want to say that we also basically only know the names of those people who participated in the offering last year or and before. Now, all CCDs that uh, were offered in the prior placements last year, they are now released and we do not have means to control or even know who now owns all CCDs. But we know there are, and we know them, uh, people with a lot of CCDs. What we do is that we maintain a very positive dialogue with them. Our impression is that that at least all the people we know that have significant holdings, they uh, think long term and they like the project and want to stick on, hold on to the project. Uh, two of the of the very large uh, owners, the Concordium Foundation itself, uh, and also the the founder group is subject to to lock up periods. The lock up period for Concordium Foundation itself is very long, so there'll be no selling. Uh, of uh, uh, of Concordium uh, holdings, except for what we may place uh, with uh, with uh, venture uh, capital funds in off market transactions and so on. But but uh, otherwise, I think generally we have a very good relationship to our holders. I cannot give any names, but we we keep a dialogue, and our impression is that basically they like it. There can be reasons can why be reasons people why. sell. Yeah. Did you say something? So the, yes. So the next question touches on um, basically the parameters we have. This one is asking about the delegation cap. It's asking, can the delegation cap be up for review? And they gave various instances where we might want to review the cap. But in general, do you think the delegation cap or the parameters we set in place can be up for review? Uh, yes. Certainly, I think that all the uh, tokenomic parameters that we have started out with uh, are basically up for review and evaluation as we go along. We have implemented a set of initial tokenomic parameters, and that, as we talked about before, is the inflation rate. It's also about uh, reward levels, and uh, we have also implemented this cap on how much uh, Delegation can you receive in comparison to your own uh, your own holding, and we have also implemented another cap on the absolute amount of uh, of CCDs that that you can stake on. Basically, that is any any single node runner cannot stake with his own uh, or his her own or with delegated uh, CCDs for more than ten percent of all staked uh, CCDs. And the other cap that is mentioned here uh, is the cap that you cannot, if you, uh, if you run a pool, you cannot have more than three times uh, your own holding in that pool. And the reason for that is that 
we um, we want to make sure, at least initially here, that we start out in a very controlled way where we kind of can look at how does the, the tokenomic develop, how are the, the note, holder, note holders reacting to delegation, how, what is the centralization, and so on. Uh, so we think that this is a prudent and cautious way to start out. Once we have experience with it, it is up for review whether whether the cap should be uh, lifted or maintained or you know changed to another parameter. So the answer is yes, we are reviewing these parameters, and we think it's it's for now uh, the right level to start off with. Okay, so the next question dives straight into price. It's asking, is token price development still a taboo topic that should be avoided in official community discussions because we are, because we are trying to look right for regulators? So I, it depends on what is meant here. I don't think that the price has ever been a taboo as I see it. I mean, we, 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 are, we have listed... Uh, the the CCD on five exchanges. Uh, everybody can see what the price is. Uh, everybody can discuss whether they think it's too low or too high. Uh, so what we will not do from Concordium side is to go out and make predictions about that. Now it is zero point zero one one, and we think that in 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 a year it will be zero two or four or whatever. We don't want to do that because we don't have the background. Nobody can basically do that, but but it's not a taboo. Uh, and uh, actually, we like that people discuss uh, the pricing. Uh, and just I think that people will have to understand that Concordium itself cannot make predictions about what it should be and what it should not be in the future. Yes, and since I'm the senior community manager, there's also more points to add on here. So initially, price discussion wasn't actively promoted or encouraged in the official channel, but over time, currently, what we can say is it's actually allowed, as long as you're not trying to chill or basically just spread fud, it's actually, we wouldn't push it. And then the officials, we, the community managers and official team members, can't officially speak on price or make price predictions or even if any discussion we participate in, you shouldn't take it as a promise or some sort of prediction. So those are the, clari the things you'd want to clarify that you can't discuss price. We just wouldn't support further. What I'd like to say, what I'd like to say there is also we very much like to talk about the things that will impact the price. That is the, the use cases, the technology, the listings, and all the good things we are trying to do. And of course, all the, all the, the the problems that could be in the in the crypto market. How will that impact Concordium and so on? We love to talk about the project, uh, and also about things that uh, that ultimately will impact the price. It's just that we we cannot kind of say we think the price is too low, and uh, from Concordium side at least, even though that could be the case. Yes. So we've got um, a few more questions, but then like we promised, we've got about six minutes left. I would like to open the floor the, the, in the chat. If you've got any live questions, any follow-up questions on any of the things we've spoken about, you could ask now. So we'll, we'll take a few seconds for that now. So maybe, Ralph, uh, I know that there was a, a question about the bridge, the upcoming bridge, uh, and I'd like just to, to say that, that we are, you know, expecting to develop or that a breach will be launched uh, in the not so far future. And uh, Concordium, there was a question about whether Concordium Foundation would provide liquidity for that. And that I can say that that uh, Concordium will certainly will contribute to making that breach very successful. We today, we have a lot of CCDs in Concordium Foundation. And basically, I see no reason why we shouldn't also have a chunk of wrapped CCDs from the bridge. So it, just to clarify that. So Ralph? 
Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, so we have a question regarding stable coins. So <laughs> is there any plan to launch any stable coins, USD or Euro based on Concordium? So this is regarding stable coins. Well, if you're asking whether Concordium Foundation itself will launch a stable coin, uh, we have no uh, such plans. We know that there are initiatives from other parties to to uh, build stable coins, and uh, we think that that will all link to stable coins via bridges. We think that that is uh, an important activity. Uh, so, uh, so stable coins for sure will be available. Uh, sometime on Concordium blockchain, but we don't have any specific plans for making our own stablecoin. Okay, do we have any more live questions? We still have some PR questions, so whilst we wait for more people to send questions, let me go to the next one. Someone asked about, oh, we've answered the bridge, so... Someone's asking about the tokenomics page. They're saying, why don't we provide up-to-date information on the tokenomics website page? Uh, there isn't any public sale. So the page looks outdated because we mentioned public sale there. Yeah, yeah, so, it's true. It is more or less the same page as we showed during the offering last year. And we have decided to keep in that way in order to have a point of reference for people who uh, who bought. It's true that it is not in all aspects updated and and it so we are working on providing more updated information maybe not changing what what that page looks like but providing uh, updated uh, tokenomic information in other places on our website so i absolutely agree with with that is uh, something we need to do and will do okay um, so yeah, as I said earlier, we are encouraging, if you have any more follow-up questions, please send them in. In the meantime, we'll go through the pre-asked questions which we hadn't touched on. How many? We have about two minutes left, so I think we can just touch on one more before we conclude. Uh, we have more on inflation. Let me see one which is not inflation. Someone's <laughs> asking, how is the current cash runway of the Concordium Foundation? So we have, uh, after our uh, our prior placement last year and previous funding rounds, we have a good and solid financial basis for our operations that stretches years into the future. I cannot give specific numbers about uh, the, the number of uh, dollars and euros in, on our bank account, but we have a solid basis for our future operations that extends years into the future. So, uh, so it, of course, it also depends on how much we use uh so but with uh, the prudent uh, use of our funds as we have always applied and will apply in the future where we plan this carefully our financial planning uh, we will uh, be able to have a runway that goes years into the future i don't think i can say it more precisely precisely Okay, that's awesome. And once again, we are running quickly out of time. I'd like to thank you again for making time for this AMA. And I would just like to remind everyone, we are stepping into an era where we are going to be more interactive with our community. So AMA such as, as this, where you directly get to communicate with the team, will become more frequent. Uh, we may not have touched on all the questions or gotten all from you, but then this wouldn't be the last time we hear from you again. Also, the other teams, you've got a tech team, we've got a commercial team. The commercial team actually plans on making this more recurring, so you get more updates on what we are working on, what projects we are bringing on board, and also you get to hear from projects that are live on Concordium. So we are far, well, we are exactly right on time, and I'd like to thank all of you for coming, especially you, Jorgen. Thank you for making this time. Thank you very much, Ralph.